Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, where the future of the Lovely People dynasty is looking a little bit more secure following the birth of Bernard Lovely People. There he is there, hello Bernard, because of course little Bernard here is our first son, which means that because of all the male dominated succession laws, he can inherit all of our titles when we eventually pass away, which is very very good news for us. It means that the Lovely People dynasty can continue through Bernard and beyond hopefully, which is marvellous Stuff indeed. I mean, yeah, we do have our three daughters, but of course we can't pass anything on to them, which is a bit of a shame because we do have the male only succession law, which at some point in the future I would like to change. I want this set to equal because that seems the only kind of fair and just option for us to have. But yeah, we can't do it right now because, I mean, yeah, we probably lack quite a few things. We haven't got high crown authority. And yeah, we need to change our faith around a bit and also change our culture as well. So we're a little way off that. But, do you know, people say about planning things, we'll put it on the roadmap. That's a very sort of businessy sounding thing that people say. So we'll put changing these succession laws to equal onto the lovely people dynasty roadmap. And we will get that done at some point in the future. But yeah, we can't do it right now, which is all very unfortunate. But there we go. But it's still good that we have Bernard. So hello, Bernard. How are you? I mean, yeah, you're not going to be thinking about any of this right now. That might be something you could possibly get up to. I don't know if you're going to do that or not. But, I mean, you're not going to be thinking about that right now. Because you're, what, you were born on the 8th of June. And it's the 11th of June. So you're three days old. You're more sort of focused on, you know, sleeping and eating and crying and all that kind of stuff. So it's fine. But you, you do all that kind of stuff. And then at some point in the future, think about changing the succession gender laws over. But, yeah, don't think about it right now, Bernard. You just, you know, have a little sleep and such like. So there we go. That is something that we can aim for in the future. But we do have an heir, which is very, very important indeed. However, what's going on right now... Now, I think currently we're working on the barracks, which is very good. Now, how long is there until the barracks is done? Uh, oh, five days. Oh, OK, let's go and do that then. So, I mean, that will give us a big boost of troops. So let's just get five days out of the way. So 393 goes up to goes up to 600. Oh, look at that. We've got 600 soldiers now. So we've got 495 levies, we've got five Faris, I think you pronounce that, and 100 Mubarizun, which is wonderful stuff. Okay, so 600 people. Does that mean that we're no longer the weakest kind of realm on the map? Because I think up until now, up until we got that barracks bill, we probably were the weakest kind of thing in the entire game. I mean, hang on, hang on, Malta. Malta's quite small. Where are you, Malta? You're all the way over there. How many troops have you got? 592. We are no longer the weakest realm in the game. Malta has eight fewer soldiers than us. <laughs> Take that, Malta. Um, okay, and maybe there are some other places around the world which are a little bit weaker than us now, but that's very good. Okay, right, that's splendid stuff. Now, we do have 160 money, and I have been kind of pondering what we need to do with this. We need to build something else. We need to get another building kind of set up. But, I mean, what do we go for? Now, I'm thinking between two things. Either we get farms and fields in, because that's a nice kind of staple thing. That gives you plus 0.5 gold per month forever for the rest of the game, which of course we're fairly early on. So when that's done, that will add up to a great deal of money over the course of the game. And that's quite a chunk of money. I mean, yeah, we could get that built and then we could get ourselves some more troops and the farms and fields could be sort of, you know, paying for us to have some more sort of men at arms troops or whatever. It does cost 127 gold. So we can't build them right now, but it's not going to be too long until we get that money together, I don't think. We're earning an okay amount right now. So we could do that for a, you know, a flat 0.5 gold per month. Or if we go all the way down here, we could build a trade port. Now a trade port gives us a little bit less tax up front, so only 0.3. But it does increase development of our little town here, of Dalak Kabir, is it called? Yeah, so of Dalak Kabir, it gets the development of that creeping up by plus 5% every single month for the rest of the game, which is very good. And development is kind of, I think it's something that can be quite easily overlooked in Crusader Kings 3. And I kind of want to work on this a bit. We have tried, but it's not really working. But you get your development up, and it increases your levies, and it increases your taxes. And it's really, really good. And your supply limit as well. So, I mean, if we get 5% development growth, you know, a little tiny, tiny boost to that for the rest of the game, that might well help us get more development, which in turn means we get more levies and more taxes and all that kind of stuff. So whilst building the trade port might result in us having a little bit less money per month immediately, over the course of the game, it might actually make more money for us and give us more levies as well. So I think, what do we go for? 
Do we go for a lovely 0.5 gold per month with farms and fields, or do we build a little port? I mean, as well, actually, actually, hang on. Let's look at where we are. Can we really, realistically, get some good fields set up around here on our little collection of islands? I would probably say that's quite difficult. I would say that's quite a tricky challenge to get a great big kind of farming enterprise set up. I think, given that we are an island nation, I think a port would make more sense in kind of terms of the game as well. So, you know, and where we are and such. I think, yeah, let's save up and get a trade port and then we get the development up as well. And also whilst we're here, hang on a minute, let's go to the council. So, um, yeah, the steward, so Farouk, at the moment is collecting taxes you can go and increase development in the county. Now, how quickly is it going to take you to do that? Oh, hang on. Hang on. When we when he's doing that as well, building construction time also comes down by 20%. So if we get you working on development over here, that's not only going to get development up and therefore get more levies and taxes in the long run, but also you're going to build things quicker so we get a port in and get that in even quicker. Okay. The only thing is then he can't collect taxes, so we're not going to get that much money. Uh, okay, right. So I think what we do is right now, let's just move time on a little bit. We'll just get maybe, I don't know, let's try and get to 150 gold. And then when we're at 150 gold, we'll then switch Farouk over to sort of uh, developing the capital over here. And then we'll get the trade port set up as well. And that leaves us with a little bit of money left over just in case something happens, just in case we have a decision pop up that requires us to spend a bit of money or whatever. Because I don't want to kind of plunge us into bankruptcy because I wanted a nice place where boats can come in and dock or that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think maybe yeah, we'll save up a bit of money and then we'll go down the development route. Ah, yeah, something else that I think somebody pointed out in the comments on the previous video. Uh, was it you? Is it Smiley? Um, I don't think Smiley has a guardian. No, indeed. Well spotted. Um, so yeah, let's educate. Who do you want to educate you? So we're educating Bernard and Happy, are we? Yes, our ward. Um, Hugs is being, I think Hugs is being sort of mentored by her dad. Okay, how about then? Yeah, we get, we get dad in again. Hang on a minute. So let's pick, uh, yeah, don't want you. Let's pick, hang on a minute. That's confusing. No, not you. Let's pick somebody else. Yeah. You. Splendid stuff. So you go in and you teach them some stuff. There we go. Wonderful. So hopefully you're quite... I mean, you are very good. You're very good. So hopefully you can teach them some amazing things. I mean, I am very tempted to uh, to get him, so to get Sheikh Najib here, to actually teach Bernard. Because I think in terms of his skills, he is significantly better than us. So he might be able to sort of teach Bernard better. And he is very, very clever. Look at that. He's a mastermind philosopher which means that he probably is going to be significantly better at sort of teaching Bernard the ways of the world and you know, doing education and such like. The only thing is, if we don't keep control of Bernard as our ward, then when the little sort of decision things pop up, we can't dictate what traits he's going to have. So he might get some slightly less desirable traits. He might have like, you know, bad ones that we don't want him to have. I'm not quite sure. Do we? That's a tricky decision, isn't it? Because I think... I think if Sheikh Najib here were to educate Bernard, Bernard would end up with better stats because he's just better at it. And he's better than us at pretty much everything, I think. I uh, know he's not quite as good at intrigue. Um, diplomacy is 15, martial is 12. The only thing that we're better at our husband at is stewardship, which is fine because that's kind of our thing. But even then, it's only a two-star thrifty Clark thing. But then if we get him to actually do the educating of our player air, we can't control... The traits that he's going to get. Oh, that's tricky. That's a tricky decision to make. But I think, do we do it? I mean, what what, what are the worst traits that he could have? What's the worst that could happen? Do we switch that round to make you educate Bernard? I think maybe that might be a good idea. Or do we leave? No, do you know what? We're going to leave it. We're going to educate Bernard. It's going to be fine. I think maybe... At some point later on, we could see if we could swap him round or something. But I mean, for now, yeah, we will educate Bernard in his in his sort of you know, in his early years. That's absolutely fine. There you go, right? A little bit of sort of dithering there, but that's okay. Right, so let's get our money up. Let's move time on nice and fast. Time does go by very quickly in this game. There we go. Another stewardship perk. We will have centralization, and this is perfect. Development growth in the realm capital, which of course is where we are, because we've only got one count in rack control, goes up by 0.3 every single month. So that means now if we click here and look at development, 
And that means that we're getting a monthly growth of 0 0.5, which then means that this is ticking up. When that ticks up to 100, our overall development goes up by one. It's a bit of a weird thing. So development growth has to get up to 100 for our overall development to increase by a single point. But yeah, now it's going up by 0 0.5 because our neighbors are helping. Centralization is a huge, big sort of bit of that. Uh, we've got some new coins minted. Baghdad, because our, our religion controls one of our holy sites, that gives us a boost. And our culture helps. But yeah, because it's dry lands, it does sort of set us back a tiny, tiny bit, but not too much. Okay, so hopefully our development should start creeping up very nicely indeed, particularly when we have the steward over there working on it as well. But okay, all right, let's move time on nice and fast again. Let's get up to 100 and yeah, 150 money, actually. I think might be a slightly safer kind of thing. And here we go. So happy, what are you up to, happy? Let's have a look what's going on with you. Um, so you are rowdy. So you're going down a martial or an intrigue route. It looks like you're actually going down the intrigue route. Yeah, there we go. An intrigue education is what we're heading for with you. Um, okay, so Happy seems to have been having a difficult time at our latest feast. She sneaked out early and was not seen for the entire rest of the evening. Okay, so either she keeps impatient, which is bad for learning, but prestige does go up. That's where a hostile scheme power goes up by 15%. And she can expedite schemes. So would we say that, though? If you have better things to do, do those things instead. It is a duty to be seen whether you want to or not. So she loses impatience and gets shy. Which is not great for her kind of spying. Or focus on the food if the company bothers you. She loses impatience and she gets gluttonous. Okay, we don't want her to have gluttonous. That's not a good thing. And it's sinful. I don't think we do that. Because we, yeah, we're quite a sort of a pious person. So um, how about either shy or impatient i think we'd probably say do you know what if you've got better things to do do those things instead because you know we're sort of efficient we're more of a sort of you know, sort of uh, administrators but well okay if you've got stuff to do go and do that it's fine and we are quite shy we're shy so it's like yeah if you don't want to be at a big party thing then that's okay you creep off and do some stuff so yeah keep impatient that seems like the best thing for you to have we gained men at arms negotiation for five years because of our spouse's average stewardship skill. Men at arms maintenance comes down by 25%. That's not going to be much, but if it's 0.1 money per month, that is significant, really, when it adds up overall, over many, many months. Um, okay, heresy. Ibadis in Fez, possibly. Um, Emir Muansir of Fez has announced to the world that he and his vassals have converted to Ibadism. Ibadism? I'm I will be pronouncing that wrong, I do apologize. Having become disillusioned with the teachings of the Ashari priests. Oh, that's us. They've broken away from our faith and they're going down a completely different kind of sort of Muslim faith. Oh dear. Um, the nobles affairs no longer consider the clergy to be righteous and true and are distancing themselves from their former religious institutions. They're instead professing themselves Ibadis, whose doctrines they feel better align with Allah's will. Oh dear me, right, okay, so either we can say, yep, those vile heretics have led them astray and it just happens, or we could convert over ourselves. I think that would be a foolish thing to do right now. We're already sort of, uh, yeah, a little bit sort of isolated. We don't want to become isolated even more in terms of the religion of this kind of area. So, um, yeah, it's fine. That's going to appear somewhere. Where is that? Where has that appeared? Um, oh, crikey, it's... <laughs> It's many, many, many miles away. I don't think we need to worry too much. Yeah, it's it's really far away. It's across the other side of the continent. I don't think it's going to bother us too much. Okay, no, yeah, I mean, that's it's good to know. Thanks for the update. Thanks for the email, but that's okay. Right, we've gotten quite well with our court physician. I don't think we need to keep swaying her anymore. Is there anybody else in here that we could do with swaying a bit more? Possibly the Chancellor. Only on plus 34. Maybe, yeah, we'll... Oh, and hang on. Have you got any languages we need to learn? That'd be exciting. Uh, oh, no. We must speak the same language as our husband. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. I wanted to learn a language, but never mind. Um, let's go and sway the Chancellor a bit, because he's only on plus 34. So we'll work on that, because yeah, I think our, um, our physician is okay with us now. We've swayed her enough, I think. And I think if we leave it just one more month, just let time tick over a little bit. That should give us... There you go. 151 money. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on, who are you guys? What's going on here? Are they involved in another war? Hang on a second, let's go and have a look. They are defending against 
Oh, they're defending against these people here. So these people here. So who are you? Hang on. Who are you? You're attacking. So Nazirka Hill Ibn, uh, do you pronounce that? Um, Hadab of Badi. So this chappy over here is attacking our troublesome neighbours, Gerard Alamira, who is a is our early kind of rival. We don't like you, Gerard, because you keep coming in and raiding us and causing us all sorts of monetary issues. And it's a right pain. So we don't really like you very much. So we're just going to sit back and sort of chuckle at the fact that you are now under attack. So what have you got? You've got 2,000 troops. And they've got... How many have they got? They've got... Hang on a minute. Where are we? Is it you? 200... Fought it, really? <laughs> Hang on, what? That can't be That can't be right. That's going to be a very short war if that's the case. You've got 3,000. Ah, because you've got some friends. You've got buddies coming in to help you. I've just blatted out of existence. Where are your allies? I don't know where they've gone. You had some allies. I've kind of pressed the button and they've vanished, but it's okay. There were some there. Okay, you're still very much down, though, on, on the attackers. I think maybe our troublesome neighbour might actually get that one sorted. But okie doke, never mind, that's them doing that. I thought it was maybe over us, but it's not. They're setting fire to, um, yeah, Buri. So the little sort of tribal place over there. Okay, that's fine. You carry on doing that. We'll just watch them over the water. Um, I think now it's a time to get our trade port in. Um, I don't think... Hang on, hang on. In terms of these, how near are we to Architect? We're nowhere near Architect quite yet. I was thinking, do we save a little bit of money? Because Architect brings the cost down. But I think that's going to take too long. I'd rather get the port in sooner rather than later. So here we go. Let's get this port in right now. So trade port, 127 money, 17 months. So it's also a little tiny bit quicker than the farms and fields. So get the trade port in. There we go. So development growth will go up. And then let's go to the council. Let's see what impact this has on taking the steward off of collecting taxes and on to increasing development. So at the moment, we earn 1.7 money per month. If we then say go over there, 1.6. Oh, you might as well just increase the development of this place up all the time because you seem to make hardly any kind of difference at all when you're collecting taxes. I'd rather you just got the development up just constantly. So two years it's going to take to get that up to the next point. But okay, yep, yeah, that's fine. That is underway. That's something that is going to you know, do as well in the future. A roadside stall. Okay, now I've just spent a great big pile of money. Here we go, spending more of it. Um, while traveling across the dry lands of the Sheikdom of Dalak, I find a makeshift looking stall by the side of the track. As I stop to take a look, a peasant by the name of Bahir, I should match you, jumps into action. <laughs> Boo! Trying to convince me to buy one of the small Shahada carvings he has on sale. Um, I make them by hand, my lady. Each one takes me hours of work. I don't know what Shahada is. Hang on, hang on. I might do a quick spot of Googling. What is Shahada? Oh, okay, right. That's quite interesting. So it's not a kind of a physical thing that you can represent. It's not like, you know, a building or an animal or a person or whatever. Shahada is the Arabic term for the declaration of faith in one God, Allah, and his messenger. And it is apparently the most sacred statement in Islam. I never knew that. I have learned something new and exciting today. There you go. Every day is a school day. Okay, so what should we do with this then? So I shall buy one. It means that we lose 50 gold. I don't want to lose 50 gold because that will plunge us into debt and that is bad. There is a 60% chance that we might get a little kind of artifact type thing. But we don't know what that's going to do. It might be terrible. It might be brilliant, but it costs a lot of money. Uh, there's a 40% chance that we get a low quality carving and popular opinion goes up by 10 because we help somebody. Yeah, I don't think that's worth the investment. Also, I think in not too long, our next perk thing is going to be popular figurehead, which gets popular opinion up by 50. So that going up by 10 is sort of neither here nor there. That's too expensive. I doubt this still pays tax, tear it apart. Um, no, because that's going to get our popular opinion down. And whilst, yeah, we are going to increase it, I don't want to be a meanie person. We're not bad. We're a nice kind of understanding sort of person. We don't want to become this kind of tyrant. Um, I'll talk to him, does that say? And I'll see what I can learn about salesmanship. So we get 100 stewardship lifestyle experience. Okay, yeah, go down that route. That seems like the best thing to do. We get something out of it. It doesn't cost us money. That's all wonderful stuff. Okay, there we go. Splendid. And right, let's just move time on. I mean, the big thing now, I think, is getting that trade port in. And then maybe getting our development up ever so slightly. And 
Yeah, our troublesome neighbour won in his war, which is a little bit unfortunate. So there we go. I mean, at least they've not... Yeah, the smoke has kind of gone from this place being on fire now. But yeah, at some point, we are going to have to take care of him because he is a little bit of a risk to us. He is a little bit of a problem. Um, because, you know, he's our neighbour and he keeps raiding us, which is bad. That's annoying because he keeps coming in and setting fire to our stuff and killing our people and then we get less money and all that kind of stuff. But also, if we go and look at this... If we go and look at the um, the duchy titles, there is the duchy, uh, I call it the high chieftain at the moment because he's got it, but the high chieftain, the duchy, whatever, of Delax, which is what we want. We want that because we have the islands of Delac. You know, that's our main thing. That should be our primary title. Um, but yeah, I think he's got it. Yes, he does have that title because he's got two of the three counties required to actually form that duchy title. Now, the bad thing about that is that now he has a proper, actual, legitimate kind of Casus Belli thing to come and attack us to you know, claim the third of the three counties required to make up that duchy. He's actually got a reason to come in and attack us now, which is a little bit of a problem. I'd rather he didn't do that. I mean, ideally, we would take the fight to him. We'd take the fight to him and then, I don't know, go and claim that place over there or this place here or whatever. And then we could then try and, you know, get... If we could get these two places... If we could get these two counties here from him, if we could wrestle them from his control, then we could, I don't know, usurp his duchy title. And then that would make things a little bit more secure in terms of succession and such like. But also it would mean that, yeah, that we could get ourselves a proper sort of duchy title. We would become a duchy. Is it an emir? Do we become an emir? I think it might be an emir or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. That's a duchy. Yeah, the emirate. So we become an emir of the emirate of Delac, I think, possibly. I mean, that would be very good because, yeah, at the minute we are at risk of him attacking us and he's got an entirely sort of, you know, in the game, legitimate reason to do so, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, we can't do much about it now. Can't do much about it now. So let's move time on. Let's get our trade port done. Let's get that complete. Only nine months left for that to be done. And then hopefully, yeah, that will speed up the, um, the development in the county as well a bit. So if we could get that development up, that would be really, really good as well. Because that means we just get more stuff. We get more stuff out of it, which is excellent. Yeah, we want more money and more levies, all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, let's just move time on until we've got our port done and development has increased. Or until something else kind of pops up to grab our attention. Oh, that is beautiful. Well done, steward of ours. Well, our steward, who is no longer collecting taxes, because he's over here working on the kind of development stuff. Um, He's managed to do some sort of efficient taxation of the Sheikdom of Dalak. So not only have holding taxes gone up by 10%, which I think is kind of what he was giving us anyway when he was doing that job, when he was doing this thing down here. So I think he's kind of offset that for 10 years. So he can now stay down here for 10 years developing our county. But also we've just been given 50 gold in one big hit, which when we only earn 1.7 gold per month, that's huge. That's a huge amount of money to earn. That is wonderful stuff. Is it worth... Is it worth maybe investing in either another... Uh, nope, because we can't afford that. Is it worth investing in something else? Uh, maybe some archers. Archers are quite good. If we're going to take this guy on, what have you got? Um, hang on a minute. You've got levies, horn warriors, light horsemen, and then, yeah, siege engines. Okay, so horn warriors are skirmishers. Ah, right, hang on. They would counter heavy infantry. So if we were going to go and fight him, his horn warriors would counter our Mubarizun, these dudes here, the Mubarizuns. So he would counter those, but then he's got light horsemen. They counter archers. Okay, so if we got anything that would counter light cavalry, could we get something that would counter light cavalry? I imagine pikemen would counter light cavalry. 22 damage and toughness 24. I mean, if we did get enough money, we could get bowmen and pikemen. And have a little tiny military boost. Although that would cost us quite a bit of money. That's 0.1 per month for the pikemen. And 0.07. Do you know what? That's not too bad. That's cheaper than I thought it was going to be. Wow. Okay. That's quite good. Yeah. Un unraised maintenance is what? 0 0.17. Not 0.17 per month. To get 100 pikemen and 100 bowmen. That might be worth doing. Let's, let's treat ourselves to some pikemen. Oh, hang on, but not right now because we haven't got that much money. Let's get bowmen then. So 55 gold will get us 100 bowmen eventually. 
let's boost our military a little bit more because we are sort of, you know, potentially under threat from this chap here, from Mr. Alamira, who's a, a pain in the posterior. So yeah, let's do that. Let's get ourselves some more troops. And look, that number is going to creep up even more, which is very, very good indeed. Look at that. We've got some bowmen coming in, which means at some point we will have 700 soldiers. I mean, compared to the, what, 340, whatever it was that we started with, that's, that's loads. And the harbour is done as well. So now, in terms of development, yeah, it's going up 3.4 per month because we do have assistance coming in from the steward. So 2.9 of that is coming from the steward. But yeah, look, plus 5% from the harbour. It's all kind of working. It's all totting up very nicely indeed. And now we can get popular figurehead, which means that we're going to be quite popular around the place. There you go. Look, hang on, go back to the lag. Look at that, plus 50. The people love us now. This is wonderful stuff. I don't know if things happen because of that. I don't know if because people are really happy with us. I don't know if they you know, have special kind of events that pop up because of this. I'm not sure. Okay, hello, Bernard. How are you? My son and heir, Bernard, is an unusually calm child. When the others play their wild games, Bernard often withdraws to some silent corner. He doesn't speak a lot, but I can tell he's always thinking about something. Okay. So I wonder what is on his mind. He's got the trait pensive. Okay, so stewardship up by one, learning up by one. So it looks like Bernard is going to be either a steward or a learned person. At the moment, it's looking like a stewardy person. I mean, do we just go down that route right now? Because we are quite good at that. We could do that quite nicely. We could teach him all about stewardship because that's what we're good at. And also we are quite smart. Anyway, do you know what? Let's do it. Right, Bernard, you're going to go down the route of stewardship. Absolutely. The study of administration, management, and the flow of gold. And that will keep things ticking over very nicely here. So, okay, choose that focus. And there we go. So already, at the age of three, my goodness me, time flies, Bernard. Um, he's got a stewardship of three. That's very good indeed. Oh, happy in hiding. Okay, back to happy we go. Happy came to me complaining about Pawin bullying her. Okay, who were you? Ah, Samaya, so, ah, you're the old, the original sort of, or which is the original, the spy master's daughter that we then got rid of because she wasn't very good. Okay, um, okay, so this girl here is bullying our daughter. That's not good. She's been hiding all over the castle to avoid facing the other child. Okay, so we can say good. Don't seek out trouble when it is unnecessary. Oh no, we don't want you to be craven. That's terrible. In oh no, although although intrigue goes up. And that is what you're kind of specialising in. And we are shy. So we would kind of possibly advise that. We go, yeah, okay, don't don't get involved in trouble. Just you know, shy away from it. It's fine. Why not hide in your room instead, however? That would go well with reclusive and shy. It's not the best, I don't imagine, for happy, but it would work well. Or a bully deserves whatever punishment you can imagine. Okay, so you lose craven and get arbitrary, which I don't think we do. I don't think we'd become, uh, we wouldn't tell her to do that. I think, even though it will stress us out, and it's probably, oh yeah, okay, no, it's it's better than Craven, isn't it? Craven's a terrible trait, that's awful. Um, I think we would say, given that we are reclusive and shy, we'd say, hide in your room, absolutely. So you'd get lazy. So stress loss goes up, you're going to lose a lot to your stats, but I, I genuinely think that's what we do. And if we're doing this properly, if we're you know, properly role-playing our character, I think... As a reclusive shy person, we'd say, yep, absolutely. Hide in your room. That's a very sensible thing to do. It is going to stress us out a little bit, which is a bit unfortunate. Can we do something to bring our stress down? And Happy is likely to receive a good education due to Sheikh Najib's tutelage. Okay, that is good news indeed. That means a Happy might well get a slightly better kind of education trait. Ah, hang on. A few people have reminded me in the comments. Uh, where is it? Over here. Um, there is a court tutor. Now, this could be very good indeed. We have to pay them a... Ch Ooh. 0.62, however, is what they're going to be... That's really expensive. That's really expensive. So if we were to have a court tutor to teach our children, to make sure they get the better kind of uh, education trait things when they come of age, that would be really good. Because, of course, we want our kids to be getting the best of, hang on a minute, these stats here, these kind of proper education traits. If they could get up to four stars in them, that would be amazing. The only thing is, it's going to cost us 0.62 money every month to have a court tutor. 
Do we have anybody that could do the job right now? The doctor, the court physician could do it. Her aptitude is good. Everybody else seems to be average. Oh, that's... It's too much. It's too much money right now for the realm as it stands at the moment. Maybe if we become a little bit more developed, we can get that goal going up to maybe not no, 0.3 to plus three gold per month. We could invest in a tutor to give our children a better education. But I think that's going to be too much of a financial hit for the kingdom. Uh, the kingdom. I'm being slightly excited in there. Not the kingdom, the realm right now. I think a tutor's just too much money. Okay, never mind. No, no tutor. Sorry, kids. You're going to have to learn from your old mum and dad. Is there something we could do to actually drop our stress down a bit? Because we are on the verge of having a breakdown and we don't want to pick up another one of these kind of super negative trait things because that will be very, very bad indeed. We've already got this one, which has knocked our diplomacy and stewardship down by one. So I wonder if we could do something else. I mean, if we call a hunt... We'd lose 32 stress because we are diligent, but that will cost us 33 gold. We've only got 55. That's quite a lot. Or if we host a feast, that's going to cost us 50, and we're not going to lose stress. Oh, no, let's not do that. I think we have to try and bring down our stress a bit. Because if one thing happens, if something slightly stressy happens, then, uh, then yeah, we're going to have a breakdown, and that's going to be bad news. So I think... Even though it's going to cost us a huge chunk of the realm's money, I think we might have to go on a hunt. In one of the baronies... Oh, which one shall we choose? <laughs> oh, shall we choose the only one that's actually got anything in? Um, yeah, okay, let's do that. 33 money going on that. Right, sound the horn. Here we go. Let's bring our stress down. So we're going to go down 32 stress anyway. Let's hope that we don't have a ludicrous situation which then gives us all that stress back. Some sort of terrible, stressful kind of hunt going on. That would be bad. Who's come with us? Who's come with us? Hunt, felling a beast. You would think it's a creature from myth. Perhaps a god disguised in animal form. It was the largest lion I have ever seen. Of course, yeah, because we're getting sort of relevant kind of creatures to the part of the world we're in. Imagine if we were playing this in Scotland. We wouldn't have a lion. We'd have a stag or something exciting. Okay, so we've felled a lion. Um, after, even after the beast was wounded, uh, the chase lasted half a day. It is still an imposing sight, lying dead before me. Okay, this one will fetch a fine price. We could get 50 money from it. And that would be handy for the running of the realm. I will have a beautiful trophy made for my husband. He gains opinion of us, but he likes us quite a lot anyway. So I don't think that will be worth doing. And would, would we want to do that? We're diligent, we're shy. Maybe we want to go and give him a present. Uh, it will be stuffed and sent to the Caliph. Okay, so hang on. So you are, yeah, you're the head of our faith. Do we want you to like us? I mean, we're not, we're not sort of, you know, we're not going down a religious kind of uh, route of education. We are quite sort of, we're quite devoted. But I don't know if necessarily we'd send something off to that person. I don't know if we'd send something off to Khalif al Kaim. I'm not entirely sure we would. I think, and as well, I mean, I know obviously that gives us 50 gold and that's really helpful. I think that's what we would do. We spent all that time doing this. We're going to be quite proud to sort of go, yay, look, we've done it. And then, you know, it gives us money to then, you know, sort of support the realm a little bit. That's what we do. I don't think we need to send anything to our husband. Because he likes us already. It's all fine. So, yeah, let's not do that. So, yeah, let's just get 50 money from that, shall we? And then just kind of get it out of our sight. And again, it will fetch a fine price. We're just sort of getting rid of it. We don't want a kind of, you know, like a, a lion carcass or a lion rug or whatever. Because we're temperate. It's okay, we've got nice things in our place anyway. So, yeah, just get the money from it. And somebody else can enjoy it. There we go. 50 money comes straight back in. That is very good. And our stress has come down. Of course, that's not finished, is it? The uh, hunt is still going on. So is anything else going to happen? No, that was it. Okay, the hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horses to leave the dry lands behind as the servants prepare the lion and other game for the journey back. In spite of our difficulties along the way, the hunt went very well. And we get 150 prestige too which is also very handy indeed. And look at this. How long is it going to be until the development is going to tick up? It's going to be next month. So hang on a second. Hang on. So currently development is 10. So levies increase. Yeah, so levies and taxes go up by 5% because development is 10. And then we get, what, 2.5 tax. So 2.5 tax, 495 levies. So now if we just wait for that to tick up, the development to go up. It won't be much, I don't think. So now we get oh, 2.51 tax. However, 
We've got to 496 levies. We've, we've mustered an extra person from somewhere. <laughs> we've just sort of gone to this person, gone, you, do you want to do some fighting? And they're, yeah, yeah fine. It could, yeah, I'll join in. So there you go, one extra person. But you know what? It's better than no extra people. Okay. And that's what we need to do. Because now, yeah, that's gone up to 5.5% levies. But imagine if we could double our, if we doubled our development from 10 up to 20, then that would give us, what, 10% increase in levies and taxes, and that would certainly look different. Okay, that's very good. Okay, wonderful. Our plan to kind of develop Delac is working. Let's just hope these people don't come in and sort of, you know, attack us a bit and try and kill us and burn all our stuff down again. Okay, we have an event thing called the Wise Fool. My name is Mukhtar, my lady. I have come before you to offer my wisdom. My Faris Mazafredin, who bought the man before me, looks sceptical. He approached the castle riding a donkey, my lady, backwards. <laughs> okay. Okay, I like the sound of you. So we can say, please share your wisdom with me. We could get useful insights and learning could go up by one. Or we could become confused and learning comes down by one. Okay. Uh, let your knowledge bless the whole court. So he could join the court. Okay, hang on. Are you good? Uh, ooh. You're very, very clever. However, you're also craven. Another kind of scaredy pants person around here. Okay. Um, shy. So we might, we might get you to join. We might get you to join because you're shy. And I think we could sort of, we could see that in each other. We could go, do you know what? I'm shy. You're shy. Come and join us and we can go and be shy and not talk to each other somewhere in the castle. That'd be nice. Um, I don't have time for fools. He goes away. Or well, amusing. Let him likewise amuse the masses. I don't think we'd do that. That's what somebody horrible would do. I think we'd let him bless the whole court and then he can join the court and he can just sort of hang around the place for a bit. Um, yeah, so 20 opinion and he joins the court. There we go. Wonderful. I mean, if we were able to get our money up a little bit more, he would be an excellent tutor, wouldn't he? He would be perfect to go down here on the court tutor thing. Um, oh, although only average. I would have thought with his mastermind philosopher four star education trait and 24 learning, he would be better at teaching than the the sort of court doctor. Oh, okay. Oh, it's gone up to 0 0.75 now. Oh, because we've moved to a new era. Because we've moved to a new era with our culture, we pay a little bit more money for our court positions. Yeah, it's 0.15 now for the doctor. Oh, dear me. Okay, however... Increase military presence, shape of delight, gain military presence, garrison size up, control growth goes up. That's quite nice. That makes things a little bit more organised. Uh oh. Oh dear. Okay, right. Hang on a minute. Where are you guys going? Nope, they're not coming to attack us. That's very good. Accusations of witchcraft. Okay, bloodstained cloth, crows, feathers, strange smelly concoctions. <laughs> okay, this is the evidence presented to me by a group of villagers from Delac as proof that Taliba has been practicing witchcraft in her hut on the outskirts of their village. The villagers claim her evil works must be the cause of their sick animals and are calling for her execution. Oh dear. Okay. So you're pretty. You're a wise woman. So you are known for your unconventional but practical approach to religion. So you will be the one who's, you know, sort of uh, making potions and cackling into the night and all that kind of stuff. You are vengeful, shy and trusting. That's a very interesting mix of things, but okie doke. Um... So the evidence is circumstantial, release her. We get 300 lifestyle experience, but the lack gets upset peasants. Popular opinion down by 25. That might not be so bad. That might not be so bad. Hang on, what are we on? Plus 50, was it? Has it gone up any more? Uh, we're on, yeah, plus 50. So that'll bring that down to plus 25, popular opinion. And I suspect maybe she might think about that. She must burn for her crimes against Allah. Okay, so she's killed by us. Uh, we gain 100 piety, and then we get satisfied peasants, so they like us a bit more. Or a witch, you say, I could use a new advisor. I don't think she'd join, because we're shy. We don't want anyone new. Don't want any more new people coming in. We just got one new person already. I don't want any more. Um, I don't, would we... I don't know. Would we burn her? We're not... Yeah, we're quite a religion. We, we like our religion. We're devoted to it. But I don't think we're fanatical about it. I don't think we'd go down that to us. I think... We'd do this. The evidence is circumstantial. Release her. Because I don't think... I mean, yeah, have you got proof that her evil works are, are killing animals? I don't know. So if we release her, we get a massive pile of lifestyle experience. But yeah, they're not going to like us quite as much. We're going to upset the peasantry. I think that's what she would do. 
because she's quite sensible and she'd realise that, you know, this is not evidence, not proper evidence. The evidence is circumstantial. Release her. There you go. Away with you. We get a big boost of experience. So I think in a couple of months, we might well get divided attention, which is relatively pointless for us. But there we go. Never mind. Do you know what? Let's move time on nice and quick. Oh, Zaheer likes us quite a lot. Is there anybody else that we could do with swaying on the council? How about the steward? Oh, no, hang on. The court imam's not overly happy with us. Yeah, okay. Let's sway you then, I think. There we go. And yeah, let's get our um, let's get our next lifestyle perk thing because it's... Oh, war declared. Ah, okay. This is a bit of a problem. This is a bit of an issue because... Yeah, he's come in. He wants this. We've got no way of withstanding his 4,457 people. We might need to go and do some strategic marrying very quickly and get some friends. Because otherwise, this is going to be very short-lived indeed. Okay, right. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. So rally the troops. This is the first time we've raised our troops, I think, isn't it? Uh, okay. So rally the troops. So we can only muster 701 people. <laughs> However... I imagine his troops are going to appear down here. Right, now comes the time to get some sort of alliances sorted very quickly by marrying off our daughters, and then we call them into the fight and hope that they turn up really, really, really quickly because we're going to need all the help we can get. Um, okay, okay, so let's have a look around. Who do we have? Now, what we need to do is we need to look around at different government styles. Now, I don't imagine... I think what we need to do is we need to get this if we survive which we might not do we need to get this sorted down here we need to get um we need to get sort of yeah, the duchy of Dalax sorted we claim that and then i think we need to move down here because it's all feudal territory so we can control this if we take control of tribal lands they're rubbish to us we can't do anything with them because it's all just kind of disparate tribes and we can't manage that we have to kind of convert them over to a clan government type which costs a lot of money i think is it did somebody say it was hundreds of gold i think it was in the comments so we don't really want to do that so i think we don't want to sort of ally with you down here because we want to kind of take your lands that'd be quite handy but i think over here i mean that chappy there hang on hang on hang on come back to this uh you uh but maybe not you maybe you're oh no you had all your friends didn't you attacking this person okay that's not gonna be any use we don't want to ally with you um, because you haven't got much in the way of troops. That will be bad. Um, we don't want to ally with uh, the Kingdom of Abyssinia, because yeah, at some point we might want to come in here and start fighting you. Uh, although you're not as strong as I thought you might be. You're not... Actually, in terms of without your allies, what have you got? I know you have got quite a lot of... You've got a thousand bowmen. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> a, a, a hail of arrows coming in when they attack. Um, also, good crown. Good crown. I like the crown, Nagus Cadus Harbay of Abyssinia. Very, very good pointy bits. Very nice indeed. Um, okay, yeah, I don't think we should ally with you. Maybe we should ally with people across the across the way. Because I think our plan is to kind of go this way more toward Africa and kind of try and you know, sort of take land over here rather than going into the kind of Middle East area over there. So I think maybe if we ally with people over the sea, that might help. Uh, okay, 1,826 troops they've got. Uh, what about you in the middle? 1,777. Okay, so if we ally with both of these people who are quite nearby... Uh, oh, what if we ally with you? Five and a half thousand. Wow, you've got 11 children. <laughs> Good grief. Is your, hang on. Is she... And she's Wow, she's pregnant. You've written more letters to the stork. The stork is tired of your letters, I feel. Although... That's a very lovely shiny thing you're wearing. Um, yeah, you've got a lot of children. Are you going to want... I bet we can't marry into your sort of your dynasty, can we? Because you've got many spouses already. Okay, never mind. Uh, what about you over here? Uh, oh, no. Tiny amount of troops. No, that's not going to help. Over there would not be so bad, actually. 3,391 military strength. And they are not fighting anybody. So we could summon you in. Uh, you do seem to like us. Yeah, okay. Do you know what? How about we marry into you? Of course, we might get drawn into their fights, but that's okay. It's not that far away. So how about we arrange a marriage between... Uh, I mean, where's where's Happy? So marry Happy, like so, and you. Are you going to accept that? Yes, you are. 
You're not going to accept it matrilineally because that would be nonsense. So, okay. So, yeah, it's your own marriage. You desire an alliance, plus 30. So do we. Marrying down minus 40. Opinion of us goes up. We speak the Arabic language. That goes up. And his age gives us uh, some points. I don't quite know why that does that, but okay. So, yeah, you're 13. He's 42. Um, I don't, I don't really like d doing this, but happy? You're going to go and marry this chappy over here. I mean, not right now. You've got a few years back at home, but he's he's very lovely. He's got on an amazing kind of piece of headgear. That is spectacular. I love that. Um, but yeah, he's got, more importantly, he's got quite a lot of military strength there. He's got quite a lot of people that he can bring to the, uh, bring to the party. So there we go. So if we say, would you like to do that? And then I think, do we go down here? and go for Emir Ahmad Ali of the Sulayid Emirate, or do we go for High Chieftain Akin the Impaler? Ooh, <laughs> he's called the Impaler. Okay, who has the better set of troops? Um, okay, you've got, what have you got? You've got loads of, you've got 400 camel riders. Hang on, you've got 400, 600, 700, 700 kind of men at arms. That's very good. How many have you got? You've got three, 400. And then some war machines. Okay, I think let's go for you. So you are generous, you're shy, and you're wrathful. Oh, would we want to marry one of our children? Someone who's wrathful, or about the others. Um, vengeful, ambitious, and honest. Would we marry you? But you have got less troops, and we are fighting for our survival. Do you know what? We'd go for this in times of in times of badness. Um, okay, so how about then? Happy's already sorted. Hugs. Okay, hugs and you you're not going to accept because our faith is different. Oh, ah, bother. Okay, yep, he's, uh, that's not going to work. Okay, not that. How about you? You are the same faith. Okay, I think even though you're vengeful, I think we would sort of prefer to marry our daughters to you because you're honest and that's a nice thing. That's a lovely thing. Uh, okay, hang on. Hugs and that chappy there, plus 19, send proposal. Here we go. So you're happy with that. Yeah, okay, here we go. Let's marry two of our lovely daughters. I, this, I don't like doing that, but there we go. Right, we need to keep an eye on what's going on down here, because if he comes to attack us now, it, we're all it's all done. <laughs> it's a disaster. Right, we've got an alliance sorted with you. Hello, would you like to come and join us in a war? <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Can we call you to war, please? Does it cost us anything? Um, Just a call to war. Oh, join the Dure War for the Sheikdom of Dalak as a defender. Yeah, because it's a Dure War because he can. Okay, right, we'll call you into war. That's nice. And then time can tick by again. And there you go. We have a new person on board. Excellent. Pause time. Can we call you to war as well? And yeah, it's a Dure War. I assume, I thought it was going to cost us some prestige, but maybe because it's a defensive war. Maybe it doesn't cost us prestige. Okay, can we get you coming to help us as well, please? And available per divided attention, which is completely pointless. We can now control an extra two domains. Great. Uh, we can control up to nine now. We've only got the one, and we might not have that for much longer, if we're being honest. So um, there we go. So hopefully, are they going to come over and help us now? Have they joined the war? Have they both joined? Oh no, they've not. Hang on. They've not joined yet because I've only just got the letter saying, hey, please come and join in this war. Bring your own beer kind of stuff, whatever. So, okay. You've joined. Very good news. And you have joined. Okay. Right. So now it's almost 6,000 versus your 2,300. The only thing is if they come over here and siege, start sieging us, that's going to be a problem. So let's raise our armies. Let's get our troops in. And we've not done this yet. So hello. Hello, troops of Dalak. How are you guys? <laughs> You've been sitting around for an awfully long time. When did this game start? 66. So for just shy of 20 years, is that? Uh, yeah, 18 years-ish. You've just been sat around doing nothing. So there you go. Time for you to get on with something. We're going to stay here and defend because we have to. We can't leave there because they'll just mangle us. They've got loads of big troops. Ah, their buddies are now joining the war. Oh no, we've still got the advantage. We still have the advantage. However, their troops are coming in. 2,323 of their troops are coming in. Allies, <laughs> allies come and help us defend. Right, they're on their way. They're just taking the most circuitous route they could ever take to get to, but they are coming to help us defend. Okay, where are the other ones? Uh, yeah, so you're helping. 
And they're amassing up here, but that's going to take a while. Oh, bother. We should possibly have done this earlier, but never mind. Never mind. It's all part of the rich tapestry of the tales of the lands of Dalak. I mean, they're going to take a while to get here anyway. So, hello. Maybe they're not coming to attack us. Maybe they're just going to stand over there and look at us across the water. Maybe that's their plan. No, they are coming in to attack us. You will probably lose, it says. However, we are defending a straight crossing. Go defensive buildings. And we have a better army commander. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, yes, say Fuller. Okay, right. I mean, we will probably lose this, but we're going to give it a very good go. But we are in a good kind of defensive position. So here we go. The 700 people of Delac versus the 2,400 <laughs> of our enemies. Um, our Mubarizons have been countered. So they're dealing 10% less. Uh, I'm dealing 10% damage. Oh, that's terrible. But our archers are getting through and they have been countered. Um, and yeah, they're doing... Oh no, okay, so their horn warriors are doing less because we've countered them with the archers, I think it is. But yeah, their horsemen are fighting in favourable terrain and yeah, they're going to cause us some havoc, aren't they? That is bad. Four in the enemy's favour and then, come on, five in the enemy's favour. Come on, give, it, give us at least one win here, game. Uh, oh, one of our Pharisees has been injured. Plus two, though, and we're, we're doing our best. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fighting for our lives, but the kids are still at school. There was a commotion among the children today. Parween was attempting to preach among her fellow uh, fellow youngsters and became the target of a small fight. Happy intervened and managed to stop the fight before anyone got hurt. Oh, Parween was one that was bullying you not that long ago. Happy? That is very good. So you can keep the trait calm. You could be brave or you could be zealous. I think keep calm. Calm is good. Be calm. It's a wonderful thing. Diplomacy up. Intrigue up as well, which is what we're going for with you. Yeah, remain calm. That sounds brilliant. Right, we are going to lose this fight, which is no grand surprise, I don't think, because, yeah, we're never going to survive that. Um, oh, hang on. Tal Talib has died. Okay, our rival is dead. Oh, we lose some stress. Okay. <laughs> Talib has been killed. However... Um, we have lost some people. So, say full... Oh, the general's being captured. Oh, botherations. And now Delac is under siege. And we've got no means of actually going in to sort that out. We do need to go and get another marshal in. Because the existing one has been captured. Our steward is the best one for the job. Oh, no. We've not got any people in. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, right. This is terrible. We've got no marshals in of any kind. Do we have any people that we can do marrying of in the council really quickly? <laughs> uh, hang on, no, there it is. Courtiers. Um, have you, are you married? Yes. Uh, yeah, you're married. Okay, this is troublesome. Samaya is, yeah, you're married. Hanifa, you're married. Oh, botherations. Um, our daughter is going to be married. Let's not, let's not mess that up. Um, you... Could we bring you in? But you're only nine. Oh, no. I, I don't think that's going to work, is it? I think we're going to have to accept that we haven't got a general anymore. And can you lot hurry up? Um, oh, they're sieging down. No, because if we they take our place and that's it. It's all done, isn't it? It's all over and there's no point carrying on. <laughs> so I think maybe we need to get the... Uh, you lot need to come in here and attack them really quick. There's ten months. 10 months for you lot to fight them off or else it's all over for us and this is a very short run of Crusader King 3. Right, where are they going? Because they're coming down here. Look, please tell me you're going to attack them. Yes, they're going in to attack them, which is brilliant for us. Our forces are kind of just sort of sloping away in a sad way, going, ouch, we're a bit dead now. We haven't got many levies left and some of our bowmen got murdered. So here we go. We need our allies to come in and help us. Please come in. Get on your little boat and come in and do some fighting for us. Go a bit quicker, however, <laughs> because we are running out of time. Oh, they're oh, everyone's coming in. They're all coming in. However, are they going in? Are we? Are they linking up in the same point? Ah, right. Okay, our, our buddies are linking up. We'll go and join in as well, for what it's worth. I mean, we're a bit rubbish, but we're going to go in and help. No, don't. No, 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 no. Don't siege. The if we lose this, it's all over. We've got three months until the game ends. Can you please go and stop them attacking our place? <laughs> because if you don't, that's it. Okay, we're going to charge in. And we're going to hope that the AI come in as well. Oh, dear me. This is 30-something days. Can we get... They're coming in. They're coming in. 24 days. Right, okay. This is, this is the fight for the future of our place. 
This is it. This is the fight that we have to win. If we don't win this, it's over and everything is bad. Plus 11, plus 13. Oh, our allies are really helping us. Thank you, allies. <laughs> we will repay this at some point, but oh my goodness me. It's a desperate, desperate fight for survival. Um, yeah, there we go. I think they have one and they're being killed. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. They are now going away. So the enemy is sloping off because they've just been beaten. But now, yeah, we need to then start dealing them some damage. We need to go and grab his capital, I think, would be the best thing for us to do. Uh, the other thing is we need our buddies to go and do that. Now, do they follow us around? Are they just going to follow us? I mean, if we go over there, we're going to take some attrition. Oh, yeah, we need to go and get this place first, don't we? Hang on. Nip across the water. Do they come over with us? Do they come over with us and start sieging this down? Yes, they do. Okay, so six months until Bury goes down. And then hopefully that means that we can move over to here and then take down their capital there. And that should be it, I think. Hopefully if we get their capital, get some good prisoners and then stop this silly war from going on. Oh my goodness me, that was... We were days away from defeat then. We were days away from the end of the story. And it, and it kind of came good in the end, but only just, <laughs> my goodness me. Um, okay, okay, it's fine. Yeah, we have an empty councillor position, I know. Oh, good, he likes him, still swaying somebody. Okay, let's keep an eye on where they are. Right, they're not going to, our buddies aren't going to like this though, are they? Because the enemy are wandering into our allies' territory to try and get on their nerves, I think. So are our allies going to sort of go, do you know what? It's fine. They're attacking us, it's okay. Or are they going to clear off and defend their own lands? because they're entirely justified to do so. Um, okay. A commoner of Mashriki heritage has been accosted in the streets of Dalak Kabir over some minor offence. By making a statement in their defence, I could perhaps convince my court to man Muzaffar, the equally Mashriki of my good character. But I might risk alienating my Bedouin peers. Right, so we are Bedouin. That's our culture. So we could say, yeah, the Mashrikis are good people. He then likes us a bit. And there's a 10%, no, not 10%, 40% chance that we lose a bit of prestige. Or we could just show off. No, we're inclusive. It's fine. Yeah, they're, they're good people. And we didn't lose prestige. And we impressed our our sort of courtier man, which is wonderful. Right, okay. How are we doing over here? There's a lot of icons over here now. We'll kind of squish together. So 40-something days. Move Tom on a bit quicker. Let's get this place siege down. They're sieging our allies' place over there. But I don't think that's going to be too much of a bother. So, right, siege that down. We're up to 47%. Now, where are they heading next? Our allies are kind of going over here. Are they thinking that if they siege that down, that's kind of it? I was kind of thinking their capital might be the best thing to do. But maybe they can do this quick. Well, it's only four months. It's hardly any time at all. Uh, right, hang on, siege one. We've got a bit of gold. That's nice. Uh, my daughter, Happy, is more likely to receive a good education due to Sheikh Najib's tutelage. Okay. This is good that you're making two of the kids brilliant, but are we able to... go? Oh, Bernard's stats are not looking very good, are they? Hang on. Bernard is six. Uh, yeah, your sister is... So Smiley is seven, only a year older. And I think if we were to add those numbers... Hang on, what are Bernard's sort of total numbers? So two, four, eight, ten, twelve. And you've got nine, ten, forty, twenty... So she is only a year older, but she's got double the amount of points. I think, I think what we might have to do is, I think we do need to get our husband teaching Bernard. I think he is significantly better at teaching. These things keep popping up saying, hey, he's, you know, the, the kids are doing really well when Sheikh Najib is teaching them. Uh, oh, hang on. Hang on. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, Sheikh Najib, don't go out and do that. Don't leave the kids without a without a father and an educator and stuff. Don't go and get killed. That'll be bad. I mean, our knights are a bit rubbish. They're a little bit poor. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, don't you go and do that. That That's a terrible plan. Um, yeah, I think we need him teaching Bernard. Because I think Bernard's stats are just struggling. Because we're not as good as him. He's better at teaching and everything else. I think he needs to be doing the teaching of our player heir which does take away our ability to choose his kind of, uh, to choose his sort of uh, traits and such like. But I think overall, he'll come out with a better set of stats. Uh, it's a bit of a tough decision, isn't it? But I think that's what we should do. Okay, but hang on a minute. So who's looking after Smiley? Right, so we will teach you to remove Guardian. So get away from that and then Edge Ketchup. We will do that, please. 
Um, oh, can we can we not do that? Um, I know because we're already doing two as well, aren't we? Hang on a second. Yes, of course. Right, hugs. So we're uh, no, hang on. He's guardianing hugs. I'm very confused. Who who isn't he teaching? Uh, right. So happy. Here we go. Hang on. What? Happy is teaching. We're their guardian, though. I'm really confused. Aren't we teaching Happy? My daughter Happy is more likely to receive a good education due to Sheikh Najib's tutelage. Is it just because he's just teaching them generally and being nice, possibly? Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe we don't need to do that then. I still do think he needs to be teaching... Uh, yeah, he needs to be teaching uh, the, the son. He needs to be teaching Bernard. Okay, right, so remove you as a guardian. Okay, so go back to here. So Bernard... Can we now educate child? We don't want to do it. Can our husband do it, please? Where is he? There, right. So you go and do that, please. So that's good. And then which one of our kids has now not got a, a ward? Right, you haven't got a ward. So you can have us. So that's good. So Bernard's got... Bernard's got Sheikh Najib. Uh, Smiley has us. Hugs has got Sheikh Najib. And Happy has got nobody. Okay. So you can have, if you could have Sheikh Najib as well, how many can he teach? I think it's two, isn't it, at a time. Uh, okay, no, you can have us then. That's fine. We'll teach you some stuff. There you go. Wonderful. Right. So what are they doing now? It's going to take, what, four months to siege this place down. So let's just move time on. Just hopefully this can tick down a bit quicker. And then I think, yeah, if we can get down here and take out their capital, if that's not enough already, um, Spouse's piety impresses the Caliph. Our husband is amazing. Well done, husband of ours. You're doing all sorts of amazing educating. You've impressed the Caliph, the head of our faith. That is very good stuff indeed. Okay, so let's get this place siege down. I don't think that's going to be enough, unfortunately. 81%. That brings the war score up to. We're holding our objective. I mean, we could just sort of wait. I think they're going back over here to stop them sieging down their own land, which is fine. I think... Oh, yeah, they've taken that. They're going to take that, aren't they? Which does... Does that affect the war score? I don't know. But, yeah, they're going over here, I think, to fight their own fight, which is absolutely fair. So I think we're over here. If we head down to here, and now we get chivalric spouse. We get plus two advantage. Oh, our husband is amazing. Well done, husband. Well done. I'm going to give you a nice big hug. Um, okay, so let's come down here. Siege this down. When that's done, that should be the end of the war because they haven't got a leg to stand. It might finish before then, possibly, because we are controlling the war target. So that is ticking up. This first number here is ticking up very nicely indeed. How long is that going to take? Only four months. That's coming down very quick. People are deserting, all sorts of bad things happening. Oh, they've come back. They've come back over here. Um, there are some raiders over here. But they're raiding our enemy's land, so that's fine. We don't need to care about that. Is that going to undo that? I don't think that, I don't, we care. <laughs> it's fine. Just do some raiding. And Happy has come of age. Okay, so what did you get? A three-star education trait in Intrigue. Intricate Web Weaver. Okay, so not the finest set of stats in the land, but okay for someone who's 16. Um, okay, that's pretty good. Sheikh Najib's contributions to what Happy's education cannot go unmentioned. His guidance has helped the child reach further than I could have alone. Okay. Yeah. So we definitely need him in charge of Bernard. That's the right decision now. Okay. There you go. And happy. Farewell. I mean, I think, yeah, we now need to yeah, do the whole wedding thing. It is sorted. Um, how many days do we have? Eight days until I think this war is going to be over. The war of just about surviving. Are they coming in to attack us? Right. We're on plus 100%. We're going to enforce your demand. So he's going to give us 83 gold for war reparations. Um, he's going to spend 20 money. Factions targeting him are going to go up a bit. We're going to gain some stuff. Um, gain a little bit of sort of uh, prestige, which is okay. And the allies are going to share quite a bunch of prestige as well. That was a little bit too close for comfort right at the start there, but at least we do have our allies in now, which is wonderful. Let us enforce those demands, and away with you, you silly man. There you go, we've beaten you, and it is wonderful. Right, disband all the troops. Disband them. Okay, that is brilliant. Now, I imagine control here has come... Oh, no, it's on 100. Control is on 100. Okay, 
So if we just run time on a bit, why has our money come down quite so much? Why has that come down? It's on plus one. It was on more than that uh, not too long ago, wasn't it? Okay, I don't quite know why that's doing that, but never mind. But there we go. There we go. Do you know what? We fought for our survival. We have just about scraped through with the help of our friends, which is wonderful stuff. I think that's a perfect point to finish things for now. But my goodness me, that was a little bit too close. That was a little bit too close. We do need to maybe build up our forces and then maybe next time, yeah, go in for a bit of an attack on this chappy. Take this county here. Take this county here. Get the duchy off him. And that means he hasn't got a kind of, you know, a legal right to come and get us. And then, yeah, there will be a sort of a duchess or an emir or whatever it is. Um, and then, yeah, that'll be, that'll be certainly yeah, a step in the right direction. And it will stop him from attacking us. But thank you, friends. Thank you. <laughs> you saved us. I might send them. What if we send them a gift? Oh, I don't want to declare war on you. What if we send you a gift? 48. No, okay. That's quite a lot of money. That's quite a lot of money. And I don't really want to spend that on him. Uh, we could go and sway him. Maybe we could go and sway that person. Do you know what, actually? Hang on. Let's do oh, There you go. I was going to say, get that sway scheme out of the way. Uh, let's go over here and just make this person over here like us a bit more. So, uh, yeah, we'll sway you. 47% chance of it going well. But, yeah, that's fine. That's okay. And then, yeah, if he likes us a bit more, we might be able to call upon him again for some more fighting. But there we go. There we go. We just about survived. It was very much on a knife edge there. Absolutely. It was days, wasn't it? Was it sort of like 10, 15 days away from them taking that? If they take that war over, we don't have any land. And that is it. Game is over. Game is done. We came so close to defeat. <laughs> right then, my goodness me. But there we go. We've bounced back. It's all wonderful. Um, yeah, Dalat Kabir is looking very good. We've got a trade port now. It's looking very strong. It's generating some tax. It's a bit more developed as well. So yeah, it's all looking very good indeed. So we'll finish up for now. Come back next time. See how we get on with all the shenanigans. Maybe next time with our allies, we might go and have a little fight with this chappy. We might actually go and be the aggressor and take some land off him. But yeah, we'll see what happens with that. We might do some building work first or whatever, just to try and make things a little bit better when we actually do go for a bit of a fight. But yes, we'll see all that kind of stuff next time out. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Crusader Kings 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. This sports car is indeed illegal. You clearly couldn't see the sign saying no cars. I have found the place where I'm going to live forever. The Tea and Biscuits Cafe. I want to rename the dog. Uh, let's call it uh, Wuffles. Wuffles McBark. Behold the power of the blimp.